Hey all. Today we'll be moving on from postmodernism broadly to a specific subsection of critical theory affected by postmodernism, gender studies. This is also the point where the course's focus on gender and identity will hopefully become more clear. We delve into gender studies with the American philosopher Judith Butler. The article we're reading for this course is an earlier formulation of some of the ideas that she would go on to explore in her most famous work, the 1990 book Gender Trouble. This is a really complicated text, so before we hop in, I thought I'd provide a little bit of context and background. Judith Butler is a prominent figure in third wave feminism. Now, the third wave implies there are two previous waves of the feminist movement and feminist philosophy. The first wave, which came into prominence in the mid-19th century and lasted into the early 20th century, was concerned about basic equal rights for women, the right to vote and own property, for instance. The second wave came into prominence in the early 1960s and has also been called women's lib, Women advocated for the right not only to be in the workplace, but also to have equal status and pay. Second wave feminists encouraged women to embrace their sexuality and sexual desires, and also worked to reform laws protecting women from sexual and domestic violence and harassment. The work started by the second wave, and in many cases even the first, is not done. However, the third wave began as a movement in order to broaden the scope of feminist concerns. It questioned essentialist definitions of femininity and challenged the broader feminist movement to be more inclusive. The second wave was mostly spearheaded by white, middle-class women and tended to overlook the complications and challenges faced by women of different social classes, cultural histories, and racial backgrounds. Women's studies has shifted to gender studies and as a result broadened its scope, examining the construction of masculinity as well as femininity and embracing queer studies and transgender identities. Now, Butler's notion of gender identity as inherently performative is a deeply influential concept to third-wave feminism. In the next lecture, we'll talk about Butler's ideas in more depth. But for the rest of this lecture, what I'd like to do is discuss some of the concepts and ideas that Butler references in her article. We'll start with the philosophical school called phenomenology, one of Butler's primary influences. The Oxford English Dictionary defines phenomenology as a method or procedure originally developed by the German philosopher Edmund Husserl, which involves the setting aside of presuppositions about a phenomenon as an empirical object and about the mental acts concerned with experiencing it in order to achieve an intuition of its pure essence. In short, phenomenology is concerned with how we make sense of our experiences, with understanding the nature of experiencing the world around us. Butler is influenced by phenomenology and particularly the question of what it is to experience gender. The second concept Butler addresses at length is Cartesian dualism. You may know Rene Descartes as the guy who said, I think, therefore I am. At its most basic, Cartesian dualism argues that there is an inherent split between the immaterial mind and the material body. There are a lot of implications for this, but the most relevant is that this belief tends to argue that there is some sense of self present in the mind that is separate from the material or bodily experience. In other words, reality is all in your head, sort of like the matrix. The mind-body dualistic experience is often mapped onto other binaries. Butler, for example, discusses the way the nurture-nature or culture-nature debate has evolved in terms of the mind-body split. The final foundational concept we'll discuss before you read Butler is the split between essentialism and constructionism. Essentialism holds that objects have essential qualities or aspects that determine their nature. For example, the idea that women are better caregivers because they are naturally or essentially more nurturing than men is based in essentialism. Butler is particularly concerned with gender essentialisms like the one I just mentioned, the characteristics people assume are natural to one gender or another. As you might guess, constructionism is the opposite of essentialism. Constructionism holds that people's understanding of an object's nature is constructed from their social and historical contexts. In other words, a set of social and cultural norms about how women and men should act has more to do with the way women and men behave than their biology ever does. Butler, as you will see, is a proponent of gender constructionism. A quick note before I let you go. While this is not so much a concept as an issue of definitions, when reading Butler, it's important to remember that sex, gender identity, and sexuality are not equivalent concepts. When discussing gender identity and Butler, we must understand that gender identity is not essentially tied to sex. We use sex to discuss the biological differences between people's reproductive systems, which we usually split into male and female. Gender identity and sex are different, and neither of them are distinctly connected to sexual identity. Who you are attracted to is not essentially related to either your sex or your gender identity. Well, that should be more than enough to get you started with Butler. See you after you read Performative Acts and Gender Construction.